Hey everyone, it's Lens Addict here, and today I've got with me the Dyson 360 Viz Nav and the Roomba i7. And we're going to be reviewing this Dyson one with the Roomba i7 and having a little comparison and mostly a review of this one. So let's get started. So I'm going to go through a quick overview of the pros and cons of the Dyson 360 Viz Nav. So some of the pros are that it in boost mode, it really does have good suction. It's comparable to like a Dyson um, cordless vacuum, actually. It's very impressive, the suction that it has. Also, there's no um, no need to buy replacement filters or anything like that. Everything is, is um, you know, washable and emptying. You don't need to buy bags or filters. So that's really good. The other thing is that it has different modes. Um, so it has quick, boost, quiet, and auto, which is pretty useful. Uh, I find I just use it on auto because on boost, it lasts like five to 10 minutes and then has to go back to charge. And that takes about 80 minutes to 90 minutes just to charge and then it lasts for another eight minutes. So it takes forever to do your house. Uh, but if you're not home and you're at work for eight hours, maybe boost mode works really well. Um, I guess some, what are some of the other pros? Um, it looks cool, looks really cool. Um, the mapping and navigation is like pretty good. It has like room cleaning, so you can choose which room you want to clean. I'll show you what that looks like. So here's what the room specific cleaning looks like. So you can choose to clean all areas or just specific areas. Uh, and you can also choose which area um, you want to have, what level of suction. So you choose the rooms by just tapping on them here. Unfortunately, I don't think you can choose the order that they are done in, which you can do with the Roomba, uh, but it's okay. Uh, at least you can choose specific rooms to be cleaned, which is nice. You can also choose the, the cleaning mode in those rooms, which is nice. Um, what else? It works in the dark. Uh, now I'll talk about some of the cons. So it doesn't have obstacle avoidance, which is really common on a lot of robot vacuums now. This does not. So you've got to clean your house every time you run it. If there's dog poo or cat poo, it's just going to run over it. It doesn't know not to run over those things. The other thing is, is that um, it's really, it doesn't suck up large objects very well. So the hole where the, let's see if I can show this on camera. The hole where the air actually goes in is, is here, sorry which is a very small hole. So what happens a lot of the time is if you vacuum up something quite large, it just gets stuck in the brush bar and goes and spangs around in there and it doesn't get sucked up. The Roomba has a much bigger um, bin entry, so it can suck up bigger things. Uh, another con is that I found this vacuum cleaner getting stuck uh, a lot. And in places where the Roomba i7, which doesn't have obstacle avoidance, didn't get stuck. And I'll show you some uh, video of that, or what it looks like. And often it'll just pause. It'll get stuck, it'll go into a corner, or we get stuck on a chair leg or something like that and just say paused, stuck, needs your help, um, which is a bit frustrating. But I'm sure that can be improved through software. Uh, I'm sure, sure it'll get improved. I guess another con is the price. Over in Australia, it's like $2,500, which is a lot of money. You can get a Roomba i7 refurbished for about 400, 500 bucks, and it does a very similar job, especially on hard floors. If you have carpets though, on boost mode, this thing is like, Using a normal vacuum cleaner is pretty impressive. Uh, what are some of the other cons? Um, it doesn't, yeah, it doesn't clean to the edge, which is what I said before. But I was very disappointed because this side brush, um, although it pops out and you know they really said it was really good, it really doesn't do the same job of like a spinning brush. Yeah, I yeah, pulled it out so you can have a look. But that's what it looks like when it pops out. And the Roomba kind of just lets it go along, but even if it's going along the wall, I found it didn't pick up things a lot of the time. The 
decided to pop out the little side thing. Nice. And this is going to the edges now. Well, it's not really going that close to the edges. Spinning brush was much more effective. Dyson doesn't have is a mode where it does more than one pass. So if you want to do an extra thorough clean, you have boost mode, but you don't have a mode where you where you get two passes, right? So for instance, let's say on the Roomba, you can actually say, I want you to clean this area twice and it'll do it. The Dyson does not have that option. The Dyson also does not have any mopping capability or integration with a robot mop or any other smart home products. The Roomba you can actually tell it, I want you to mop and vacuum and only vacuum after you have finished, um, sorry, only mop after you've finished vacuuming, which you can do with the Roomba. Uh, so that's really handy. I have a Brava Jet and I'll tell the Roomba to vacuum and then mop afterwards and it's great. Works really well. Um, the Dyson does not have that capability, unfortunately, but maybe they'll release a mop in the future, who knows? Although I doubt it. Um, they only just released their first wet vacuum cleaner a few days ago. Um, what else? The battery life on this isn't that great. Uh, if you just want to like clean one room, let's say you have a two-story house and you don't have, you don't want to move the dock upstairs and downstairs every time you use it, right? Um, the battery life isn't long enough to do your whole house one go, even a small house. It has to go back and charge. In my house, it's only 40 meters squared, 50 meters squared, I don't know how big, but it had to go back and charge. So if you have a, like a two-story house and more than that, then you're gonna have to like segregate it into all these separate rooms. The Roomba lasts almost two hours on a charge. This thing barely lasts 50 minutes. So um, that's another thing I think about. Uh, what else? Yeah, I think other than that, it's pretty good. Like, it doesn't have any major flaws. It's just, I just feel like for the amount of, it's amazing hardware, but the software is kind of average. I would say like, there's such good hardware in this thing. The vacuum, everything about it's got great hardware, but other than no spinning brush, but the software, just please dice in. I'm sure if we revisit this in a year, I'm sure this thing, I really hope that Dyson improves a lot. The other thing that's really impressive to me as a pro is that this on normal mode is actually quieter than the Roomba. And the dirt detection on this is better than the Roomba. So the Roomba does have dirt detection, but in my experience, it didn't work anywhere near as well. So the Roomba has two ways of detecting dirt. It has these little infrared sensors here, which look inside the bin and detect when dirt goes through. And it also has a little microphone in here that detects dust hitting it, which is what the Dyson does. The Dyson also has a microphone that detects dust hitting it, but the Dyson does a much better job. So I've detected that dirt. And I would say the filtering on the Dyson is much better too, because the Roomba I feel like sometimes dirt comes through. It doesn't properly clean like the air. 
uh, and you'll see like after the filter, you'll still see dust. But in here, after running it many times, there's no dust anywhere inside that filter or around the rings. Even on the outside of the filter, uh, it's pretty clean still and I haven't washed it. No dirt on here. So it's just cyclone filtration here that is doing this, which is really impressive. Uh, the room, on the other hand, everything goes straight to the filter. The filter gets clogged and then it loses suction. So room is not so good there. Uh, I guess now I'll go through some other stuff like the noise levels of the Dyson and I'll compare them and I'll, so that's coming up. So here are the two robot vacuums. They're very similar in size. Um, height wise, the Roomba is shorter than the Dyson. Um, and the way that you clean them is relatively similar, although the Dyson does not need any parts purchased. So for instance, uh, let's say the filter in the Roomba is not designed to be cleaned. So you have to take this filter out and get a new one. Uh, you can put it in the wash, but after a few washes, it starts to degrade. It's kind of like paper-like. Uh, the filter on the Dyson is accessed here. And you can see it just pops out. And Dyson recommends that you wash it, which is cool. So you don't have to buy new filters like you do with the uh, Roomba. Uh, the other thing, the Dyson uses more cyclonic cleaning. So got cyclones in there. You can see it caught something. And yeah, it opens like this. Still stuck in there. There it came out. And it clicks back in. And then the Roomba, you just like press this button. And then you tilt all the dirt up, but I'm not gonna do it in here. And then with cleaning the brushes, we'll have a look at the brush difference. So with the Dyson, you um, pop the brushes like this and then the Roomba you kind of pop them like this and they come out. Dyson just got one brush, pops off like this and then you can clean it. So it's much bigger compared to the Roomba brushes but the Roomba still does a pretty good job in my opinion. Um, cleans really well still. And there's a side brush on the Roomba. You can also clean the wheel and everything's easily replaced on the Roomba. You just undo these one, two, three, four, five screws. The nice thing about the Roomba is that there are parts available for the wheels. Uh, the Dyson also has parts, which I'll show in just a sec. But you can get left wheel, right wheel, side brush module. Uh, you can even replace the cleaning module, which has all the gears and the motor and the vacuum. Uh, and get new batteries as well. For the Roomba, you can get a new dock, bin, uh, the cyclone uh, part and the handle, and they're all reasonably priced actually. $30 is pretty good. The brush buff at 35 is actually pretty good too. You can get a filter housing and the combined filter, but no battery. Yeah, there's no, you can't get a replacement battery or replacement wheels yet. On the Dyson, I'm not too sure how opening it up and replacing parts works, but the fact that they don't use Phillips head screws tells me that it's probably not gonna be that easy. Uh, one other thing I find a bit strange, that when you put this thing upside down, the camera sits right on the ground and it gets scratched. And you might not be able to see it, but this camera is already getting a bit scratched. As you can see on the top of it which is a bit disappointing. The Roomba's camera, in comparison, is a bit protected. So the camera on the Roomba faces out like this. So even after lots of use, the camera is not scratched. So I don't know if that will affect the mapping or anything like that, but just something to think about on the Dyson. Uh, and this kind of sacrificial thing here, that's just plastic, protects it. Whereas that camera is the highest point on the Dyson. So if you have something that's right at this level, the camera's gonna get hit on the Dyson and get scratched. The Dyson does have lights on top, so the Dyson can um, clean in the dark. The Roomba i7 doesn't, but the Roomba J7 does, so the newer Roombas do have lights. I just don't have one of those ones. The Dyson has um, lots of different cleaning modes, so it has auto where it adjusts the suction automatically. Quiet, 
um, reduces the brush bar and I'll, I'll post videos of each different mode and you have quick which is similar to auto but it doesn't seem to ramp up the suction and um, seems to go a little bit faster and then boost is like max suction at all times it doesn't last very long on battery it needs to go back to charge quite a bit So here's an error I found with this robot vacuum from Dyson where I told it to clean a specific room and it would just fail and throw an error message. So I'll show you what that looks like here. But yeah, I told it to clean the bathroom and I went all the way to the bathroom and then threw this lovely error message saying it couldn't clean any of the selected zones. So that was pretty disappointing. Here's what it's like to empty the Dyson 360 Viz nav. So it has a pretty cool emptying design uh, where the bin automatically kind of cleans the uh, shroud around the cyclones and then pops open the bottom as well. And the filter pops out as well and you just put it for the wash. So it's pretty cool, pretty easy to clean, pretty serviceable. This is a look at how the Dyson cleans. So this video is sped up four times and it's just a little look at how it kind of figures its way around the room and the path. I could play it at normal speed and you can do that too if you just uh, choose to slow down the video on the YouTube settings. But yeah, this is what it's like. It just sits still sometimes for like, 30 seconds sometimes, it's a bit strange, but yeah, that's what it does. Uh, and you can see it's put out its little side brush, so it's decided to clean the sides now. And you can see that it doesn't do it doesn't go that close to the sides, it misses the corners a little bit, but it's not too bad. Uh, it does clean the sides okay. Um, yeah. And that's what it looks like when it does the room. You can see it sometimes goes back and forth a bit. But yeah, overall, I think it does a reasonably good job. Like, it doesn't miss spots most of the time. Um, and then we're going to basically compare the, the Dyson to the Roomba. So now we're going to see the Roomba doing the same job. So here's what it looks like. And the Roomba does the same room. So the Roomba, as you can see, the path is a little bit different. So it kind of goes a bit more like a lawnmower. And you see it kind of goes back and forth and back and forth. And it finds out where the edges are and then... Yeah, back to lawn mowing. See, it's kind of goes back and forth. I think the room is more enjoyable to watch, to be honest. But I don't know if it's more effective. It's just what the room does. Um, and yeah, basically just does that. Now it's decided to do the corners. So I think the room goes closer to the corners and the edges of the room. And I think yeah, I think the room actually does a better job of them. Uh, especially because I noticed that when I ran the Dyson and put stuff on the edge, the Dyson would miss things in the room or water. So, just something to keep in mind. Also included um, the end here where the Roomba decides to go home, which the Dyson doesn't do. Uh, if you pick up the Dyson and put it in the room, it won't try and go home. But the Roomba will. If it recognizes the room it's in, it'll still try and go home. 
So here is the Dyson doing some cleaning over some uh, like extreme dirt. So I basically just emptied my Dyson vacuum cleaner, not a robot one, an actual Dyson, on the carpet. And just to get an idea of what the Dyson does, how's it clean. And unfortunately, like it does okay, but it leaves a bit behind still. Um, so I was a bit disappointed. It never comes back. Although it detects there's dirt there and it knows there's dirt. The software doesn't go, oh, maybe I should do a second pass. It never returns. So that was a bit disappointing. Uh, maybe Dyson could add a feature where when it senses a huge amount of dirt, it might do more than one pass. Might be, might be a good feature to add. But yeah, you can see it missed a bit there. I thought I would run my uh, actual Dyson over this. So here's what it looks like. An actual Dyson. Uh, well, not the, sorry. That one is a Dyson, the robot vacuum cleaner is a Dyson, but this is a corded Dyson, so a more powerful one. And yeah, it picks it up pretty well. So it can be cleaned, it can be vacuumed clean. Uh, it just needs a few passes, as you can see, and then it will be clean, so yeah. I hope you all really enjoyed this video. Uh, that's all I got to say about these two products, uh, mostly the Dyson in particular. And yeah, um, leave any comments below if you want anything um, followed up or have any questions. I'm happy to do more testing and answer your questions below in the comments. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. See you all in the next one. Lens Addict out.